So I am back with a new miniature makeover, and this is a space that I have been wanting to make over since I've moved into this apartment, but it actually wasn't even on my mind until recently, because for some reason I, oh, by the way, I'm remaking over in my kitchen. I don't know if I mentioned it. But since I am renting this apartment, redoing the kitchen was never really something I thought that I could do very well or even make like such an impact on, but I've been doing a ton of research and just purchasing some new things that I'm gonna be trying out in the kitchen with you guys, and I think we can really do a really fun kitchen or small kitchen makeover. I live in a two bedroom Los Angeles apartment, so you can kind of imagine the kitchen size. It's nothing too insanely big. It's probably like an eight foot by eight foot square, honestly. And I wanna add a little bit of a visual interest to it. So over the next couple days, I'm just going to be redoing the kitchen space and bringing you guys along with me. And if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I post brand new DIY and home decor videos every single week. Click the bell icon, do whatever you please. Um, but you wanna be notified when I upload new videos because you guys are gonna love this one. So let's get started. All right, so here is the kitchen space, just so you guys can see. As you can see, it is pretty small. Like, when I walk in here, there isn't a ton of walking space. So as you can kind of see, I've been working over here, by the way. Um, the living room's here. There's, like, a little bar area here. And then the kitchen's right here. So this is what it looks like. It has this backsplash, which is honestly probably my least favorite backsplash of any apartment. I feel like any apartment complex just always decides to put this in their apartments when they don't have any design style or eye for anything. Sorry to throw the shade, but it's just true it's like a glass backdrop I think I want to do some new knobs on there and then also redo the backsplash for sure in a way that is very renter friendly and then just add some decor elements and just make this a little bit more pretty in general this row and now I'm getting into an area where I'm gonna have to cut a little notch out so basically as you can see here I need to cut out a space to where this goes around I'm actually extremely lucky that I found out that the full width kind of fills perfectly like it goes all the way to the bottom of the countertop and then all the way to the top underneath the cabinet which is really nice um, and then I'm just gonna take this and just mark on either side not much I love cutting into my tiles So here is the finished first wall. It's like the main area because it has the biggest area of backsplash on it. Looks so good, but I'm gonna go in now and just cut off these excess tiles here. There literally are only two tiles in this whole thing, these ones right here, that have a little, like not air bubble, but the tile that was underneath actually stuck out a bit. So those just have some character, not too concerned about those. And I got it to go all the way under here. I had to do a little bit of patching right here. If you can tell, these are like little tiny strips. Also still gonna be doing this whole section here, all the way around here and then also up um, kind of behind the refrigerator there. All right guys, I stopped by at Goodwill and I'm with McKenna. <laughs> we actually just went out to like um, brunch. Kind of found out that we live a block away from each other. Literally, Literally a block away we from each other. We can walk back and forth. It is crazy. So we wanted to stop by the Goodwill because I was like, I'm doing a kitchen makeover. So let me see if I can find anything in here. We're just looking around. You already went here this morning. I did. Yeah. I went here this morning. You saw my story. And I was like, oh my God, I already like. She already, already got all the good stuff. stuff. I'm just like, holy. <laughs> I'm going to need to come over and seal it. So we're going to see if we can find anything. But it's now a couple days after I did the first filming section, which was kind of putting down the brick. And I actually, in the meantime, finished all of the brickwork. It looks 
so good. These peel and sec tiles were actually pretty easy to work with, so I do highly suggest them. I'm gonna make sure to link them below for you guys because if you want like a quick and easy kitchen fix, I feel like this definitely makes a great impact. I actually also did it on the, like the side pieces here. Well, only on this side, so it kind of wrapped around, which I think looks really pretty. And then last night, my roommate and I did a little bit of shopping. We went to Target and Home Depot. I have to head into Home Depot pretty quickly just to get a couple of items. I'm actually not gonna spend very much here at all. I just need a piece of wood cut down and some rope to create this hanging shelving unit that I wanna put above the sink. For the hanging shelf, I'm gonna pick up this six foot piece of common board and it looks like it's probably about six inches wide as well. This is gonna be perfect to cut down into three 22 inch sections. Making a quick stop at Target, which seems to be my favorite place to shop at ever. I'm wearing a flannel because it's still November and I'm really excited because I'm gonna grab a couple of stuff for the kitchen makeover. I'm actually in like the hearth and hand section and I'm just kind of looking for some things that might look good in the kitchen, but I'm trying to keep it very budget friendly. So far so good. I picked up these two little canisters. This is a little sugar one and then a flower one, which I think will add some nice texture to the countertops and it has the wooden tops, which I wanted just to add that warmth factor. And the same thing, I added this marble and wood paper towel holder. It's just a little bit nicer than the one we currently have and I definitely think it was time for an update on this. I saw in McKenna, Exo McKenna's uh, kitchen makeover that she put this rug in there, but she actually got the runner version of this rug. But I found that they had a little miniature version, which I think would go great in front of the sink since the space isn't that big in the kitchen. It also matches my shirt, which is quite nice. And I think this is really cute and it's a bit cheaper than the actual runner. How much is this? This was $19.99 and I believe the runner is like $50. Oh, Marie, they do have the runner. It's right here. Small. seven feet long this is seven feet long so i feel like maybe just this will be a nice element because this is 44.99 and this is only 20 which brings our gives me 25 more dollars to put somewhere else I'm going to be adding handles to all of the drawers and cabinets, which I got from Amazon, which I will show you guys in just a second. They are so good and affordable. And then also creating this DIY that I have for this wall here and decorating. So let's just get started. So the handles and the knobs that I got for the kitchen are so good. These are the little handles that I got. They look like this. They're in a black, like just kind of farmhouse vibe. And then the other handles I got are these ones, which are the longer ones for the actual cabinets. And then these ones are going to be for the drawers. They're from this Amazon brand called Revente. And I'm going to link these below for you guys because I think I got 10 of these and 15 of these. And the total was like $32 with shipping. But let's get started with putting these on the actual drawers. So I also took a little bit of cardboard from the top of the packaging, created this template here, which basically allows us to put it over the top of the cabinet, mark your holes, and then just repeat on all of them. So everything is going to be perfect and we don't have to do measuring on every single one. made it this far, it is time for the Drew It Yourself project of the video. I have been super inspired by open shelving in kitchens. I just love how it displays like kitchen items. I really love it and I want to make my own. So I'm starting off with a little bit of wood, some rope, ceiling hooks, and some early American wood stain. And basically I bought a simple plank of wood that was six inches wide and I had it cut down to 22 inch sections and I'm using some paper towel to apply on one coat of the early American stain. I believe this is a popular wood stain color, but I absolutely love the color. It's like the perfect mid-century tone of wood. I think it's really, really stunning. So the next what I did was I used a half inch drill bit and I just drilled in all four corners of all three planks. That way we're able to then string through our rope. And just to give you guys a guideline, I actually just cut like 12 foot sections of rope just to be safe. Uh, but you can really cut however much you think that you're going to need. And then you're gonna string it through your first plank. And I found that using one of these like fabric rulers was a little bit easier than a traditional one. But I also kind of just 
eyeballed the entire thing. I'm not a huge measurer, as you guys know, so I just kind of eyeballed it. And then what I did when I had the two top sections done is I went ahead, marked two holes, and then I drilled through the ceiling, added in my anchors, and then screwed in these hooks. And I got these at Home Depot, by the way. They actually came with anchors and they hold up to 30 pounds, but they actually had one as well that was up to 60. So the next what I did was I just strung through my second shelf and I had my roommate hold it just so we can kind of gauge how it's going to lay. I do suggest adding something heavy to each shelf as you work down and then once you have all your knots what I did was I actually went ahead and tightened them and then added a bit of fabric tack to the, each of the knots just to make sure that they stayed cut off the excess and that was the finished hanging shelf. Okay, so the kitchen is basically done. I just finished hanging up the shelf, which looks so good on top of that brick backsplash. We did the backsplash, we did all of the handles, and now it's time to just add all of the finishing touches, like the decor elements, the couple new things that you guys saw me pick up at Target, at the thrift store, and just some of the stuff that we already have. So let's just get to decorating, and then I can reveal to you guys the final kitchen. for the reveal so let me share with you guys the kitchen in three two one So I hope that you enjoyed today's video. This kitchen makeover is one that I've just been wanting to do since I started in my apartment, but I really didn't know what I could change. And just the small tweaks that I did in the uh, space, I think really created such a nice visual impact. Of course, I can't change things like appliances or countertops or flooring. Those are things that you just have to keep kind of in a renter friendly apartment. But I did add things such as the peel and stick tile, this really cool shelving kind of unit system, um, all the new handles and such. But of course I do rent this apartment, so I wanted to make sure everything was renter friendly at the same time. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Anything that I did use in the video, I'm going to make sure to link in the description box below for you guys. And do not forget to subscribe to my channel for brand new home decor and DIY content every single week. I'm going to be posting so much in December. So definitely click that bell icon next to the subscribe button and get notified when I upload brand new videos. You can also follow me on Instagram at Lone Fox Home, which I'll put on the screen for you guys right here. And I will catch all of you in my next one. I'm going to go enjoy the kitchen and I'm actually super hungry. I'm going to make some Trader Joe's food really quickly, so I will catch you guys all in the next video. Bye, guys.